In this tutorial, I'm going to explain to you the overflow problem for a variable, okay, especially the integer on the Arduino Uno here. And then we're going to see how to solve that issue so that our integer numbers don't overflow again. Okay, so here is a very simple example. I initialize serial communication and create an integer variable named a for this example and the value is 10 and then I print this value. So let's upload this to the Arduino board. I'm going to name it overflow. So make sure your Arduino board is connected. And what we get with the side monitor is of course the value 10, which seems pretty logic here. Now I'm going to put a much bigger number here. I'm going to put 32,767. Why this number? Because this number is the maximum value you can get with an integer using the Arduino Uno. Because an integer on the Arduino Uno is stored on two bytes, which means basically that you can use from minus 32,768 to 32,767, like this. So this is the maximum value you can get with an integer. And let's upload this and let's see what we get with the serial monitor. We get the correct value, okay? That's what we expect also. Now I'm going to add plus one, so 68. And let's see what we get here. I open the serial monitor and oh, we don't get this value. We get minus 32,768, which is the minimum value you can get in an integer. Well, that's quite weird. Let's try with the next value. And let's see what we get. Minus 32,767. Well, so that is the overflow problem. So this basically is the representation of all the values you can get in an integer. You have, so minus, so the minimum here, minus 32,768. Zero is the middle, and then you have the maximum 32,767. Now, what happens if you try to get a value that is after the maximum? Well, this is simply going to go back to the beginning of the range, which is the minimum. So if you try to add plus one to the maximum, you're going to go back to this. If you add plus two to the maximum, you are going to get to that one. Okay, plus three, plus four, etc. And the same will happen if you try to go minus one from the minimum. If you go minus one from the minimum, you are going to go back to the maximum value. So as you can see, the overflow problem is quite simple to understand. You have a range of values for any given data type you can use in your programs. And this range is not infinite, okay? This range goes from a minimum to a maximum. And whenever you go over the limit of that range, you are simply going to go back to the opposite side of the range. So let's go back to our problem. What can we do if we want to print, for example, 40,000? Okay, this will never be 40,000 with an integer, okay? This is going to be minus something. So if we want to use bigger values, we need to use the data type long. Okay, the data type long here, I'm going to put that here. So long will be, so this is int. Long is stored on four bytes. And basically, I'm not going to put the exact number, but it's basically minus 2 billions to plus 2 billions. So if you want to store round numbers that are quite big, don't use int. Don't use integer on the Arduino Uno. Use long. With long, you get a much bigger range. So 40,000 will be in that range. So we have no problem with that. Actually, let's try the code now. Down uploading, and you can see now we have 40,000. If we use integer again, with integer, 
the variable will simply overflow okay and go back to the minimum and add the rest of the values after the minimum so long is the solution and now with this video not only you know that you have to use long but you understand why you have to use it so for small variables let's say you are reading a value that is between 0 and 1000 then integer is correct and it's going to use less memory in your program also but for any value that you think that is going to be maybe above 10,000 or 20,000, just to be sure, use long. And of course, you can overflow with long, but going up to 2 billion, well, that's actually quite a big number. So in 99.9% .9 of the cases, you will never reach uh, 2 billion. If you liked this video, subscribe to get more tutorials like this in the future. Also, check out my online courses so you can learn Arduino step by step in an efficient way by practicing and directly going to the point. Links in the description. Alright, thank you for watching, see you in the next tutorial or in one of my courses.